One of the deployment options in Bluemix is using Cloud Foundry. So in Module 7, we're going to take a little look at the internals of Cloud Foundry to get a better understanding of how it works. Cloud Foundry is an open platform as a service. It was created to support multiple frameworks, multiple application languages, and multiple services. It can be deployed as a microcloud on a single laptop. It can also be deployed across large infrastructures like IBM Bluemix uses to give a very large cloud. When you go to the Cloud Foundry site, you'll see it supports a number of languages, a number of frameworks, and a number of services. IBM has taken that open source product and created Bluemix. We host Bluemix on SoftLayer. We have provided a number of IBM unique services within our catalog, but we've maintained the core Cloud Foundry interfaces and implementation. We've also added in our IBM Bluemix user interface. When we look inside the Cloud Foundry kernel, it's made up of a number of different components. Starting at the top, we have the routing component. When you try and access your application, the routing component is going to make sure that your request, your user's request, gets to your application. It'll make sure that it's load balanced across all of the various instances of your application. Next, we have authentication. There's an authentication layer to make sure that you can log in to your cloud services. And then within the app lifecycle, we've got two key components. The cloud controller is what does all the work on the Cloud Foundry platform. So when you, you use the CF command line tool, you're really talking to the cloud controller. You're telling it to create applications, to create new instances, to delete instances, to bind services. The health manager looks at the state of the entire system. It knows what the state should be, so every time you do something in Cloud Foundry, it updates a database, so the health manager knows the state the system should be in, and it tries to maintain that state. So if there's a hardware failure, and some applications or services fail, it will talk to the cloud controller to get those redeployed. And this is one of the reasons why we need to actually have an application architecture to support a modern cloud platform. When there's a problem with an application, the health manager won't try and fix that problem. It will delete and redeploy that problematic instance. So if your application is not designed to handle that mode of operation, then your end user won't get a good user experience. After the app lifecycle, we have the storage and execution. This is the place your application actually runs. And it uses a technology called Linux containers. Your application runs as part of a container within this layer. When you create your application, when you stage your application, we actually store that in the binary store. Every time you want to talk to a service or bind a service to your application, we have this service broker layer. And we'll talk about that in a coming slide. All of the various components talk to each other using this messaging bus. That's how we can scale this from a single machine right across a very large deployment. And then lastly, we have the metrics and the logging. So when I run an application on Bluemix, I'm not running on a physical machine. I'm not running it in a virtual machine. I'm actually running it in a container. And a container is an isolated piece of a virtual machine. There's a droplet execution agent which manages all the containers running within a virtual machine. And then within each container, I have a framework and runtime. These come from the build pack, which we'll talk about later on. 
and then my application sits within that runtime. The droplet execution agent is responsible for actually assigning my application to a container and then running, starting and stopping that container. I'm now going to take you through what happens when you actually invoke a CF push command on the command line. So when I do that, the first thing that happens is the command line uses the Cloud Controller REST API to talk to the Cloud Controller to actually create a new application. This is assuming that an application isn't already running and we're doing an update. So this is when we're pushing a new application. The Cloud Controller then stores the metadata relating to that new application into the Cloud Controller database. Any files that are in the current directory are then pushed to the Cloud Controller and they are then stored in the binary object store. Once we've got all the configuration and files uploaded to Bluemix, the Cloud Foundry command line will issue a start command automatically. What that does is it then gets the Cloud Controller to stage the application. And staging the application is effectively building what we call the droplet that can then be run inside a container. So to stage an application, the Cloud Controller will talk to one of the droplet execution environments and ask it to stage an application. While it's doing that, all of the output is automatically streamed into the developer console. The droplet agent will create that droplet and then store that in the binary object store. And once it's done that, it will then push a message back to the Cloud Controller telling it the staging is complete. Then the Cloud Controller will speak to one or more droplet execution agents, depending on how many instances we've asked for, and get them to run the application. They will get the droplet out of the object store, allocate it to one of the free containers, and tell that container to start up. And once that's happened, it will then report back to the Cloud Controller that the, state, the, the application is now running. And you'll get that notification back. And that's the process that happens when you push an application from the command line. One question you may be asking is, when I run or push an application, I don't specify the language it's written in. In the manifest file, I don't specify the language it's written in either. So how do I know what runtime I'm going to get for my application? And the process that happens is this. Cloud Foundry and Bluemix have a number of runtimes pre-configured. And when you push a new application, each of those runtimes is going to get asked if you can run the application. There is an order to the runtimes. So each runtime in order is going to be asked, can you run this application? And there's actually a, a detect script within each build path that has a set of rules to determine if it can run an application. The first runtime that responds is the runtime that you get. Once you've gone through all of the pre-configured runtimes, if none of them have said, I can run your application, you're going to get an error saying that there's no supported runtime for your application. But what you can also do is, if you know what runtime you want, or if you're going to use a runtime that's not pre-configured in Bluemix, you can specify either on the command line or within your manifest file which runtime to use. So the runtimes come from a build pack. And the build pack contains that framework and the runtime for an application. And the build pack also contains that detect script. Some of them are really simple, like if there is a package.json, then the node runtime will say, I can run that application. Some of them are really complex, like the Liberty runtime, where it has to work out whether it's a WAR file, whether it's an EF file, and a whole lot of different set of circumstances to say whether it can run that application. You can control what build pack your application should use. You can specify an internal runtime. So there may be multiple versions of the same runtimes configured within your cloud environment, such as Bluemix or you can specify an external runtime, an external build pack. To specify the build pack, on the command line, there is a minus B option. In the manifest file, there is a build pack option. If you want to look to see what build packs are available within your cloud environment, your Cloud Foundry environment, you can type CF build packs, and that will show you all the build packs that are pre-configured in that environment. 
It'll also show you the position. So what order will the build packs check to see if you can run an application? So this is on the slide. I've got um, the command run for Bluemix. And you can see that Liberty is our first position, followed by Node. To specify a build pack, I can either use the build pack name, which is the left-hand column output from the CF build packs command, or I can specify a URL where an external build pack live. If I want to specify a build pack, I can either use the build pack name, which is the left-hand column returned from the CF build packs command, or I can specify a URL where the build pack lives on the internet.